Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. When I was a kid, this guy right here was always around. I could always depend on this guy, right? How old are you? How old are you? I'm 65. 66 65. in two months. So I'm 53. So how old? How how many how many years older are you? So I'm 12. I'm 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 um. God, we're we're horrible. 12 years older than you. 12 years older than me. I, I never did good at math in high school. Anyway, I could always depend on him for good, solid knowledge and friendship. Okay, this guy knows more the tradition, the the history of certain knives, certain peoples, indigenous peoples. He, he knows a lot more about that stuff than I do, okay? So, we're going to show you some Puko-style knives, some traditional Puko-style knives, and then I'm going to show you some more modern Puko-style knives, okay? So, I'm going to turn this over to Bob. You guys stay tuned. We're going to talk about all these knives right here. Bam. <laughs> All right, and these. These are the modern ones, okay? So you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, uh, good uh, afternoon, wet, soggy, dreary, it's terrible. Uh, December <laughs> day here. It's really depressing. It's like a soggy baby's diaper. And it's like 40-some <laughs> degrees, so like it's not winter, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, you guys are well aware of my love of uh, Scandinavian and Finnish knives, okay? Uh, a little bit of history. Finland, the Finnish are not Scandinavian. The Danish, the Norse, and the Swedes are Scandinavian. So look it up. The Finnish have a mixture of Mongol, Mongol and other peoples within them. So check it out. They're Letic, L-E-T-T-I-C. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, okay, Bob, why do you why do you like Puko knives? I'm a traditionalist. I've always enjoyed history and the people who utilize their tools and so forth, i.e. The Kukri in Nepal, you know, the Bowie in the Wild West, um, you know, the uh, the long knives of uh, the long hunters and so forth and so on. So, <clears throat> if you want a moderately priced, well-made, almost 80% handmade or finished knife, and you've always, you know, everybody always touted how Germans made good gear and whatever. Well, Scandinavians are Germans, okay? <laughs> Basically, they were Germanic, all right? They, they put that extra touch like Doug does in his sheath to their knives, okay? And, um, yes, they make beautiful birch and reindeer and, and whatever. Well, those are, the, these are the things that are around them the in the woods. natural materials. Yeah, and, and they're in the woods. Right. So these knives are made for the woods, okay? Um, <clears throat> I'd like to start with some name brands that maybe you guys don't know about, Okay. Many years ago, back in the 80s, I was in a um, cafe or a restaurant with my then wife. And uh, I saw this and said, man, you know, these are Scandinavian. I, I'd really, you know, whatever, I'd really like to have these. Well, they're actually Finnish. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't know that much. To me, they were cool. Oh. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> this is a, um, what's his name? Um, Isaki Yorvenpa. Now, I might be saying the name wrong. But this is this is a leku. Anything over five inches and wide usually is called a leku. Anything narrower and smaller than that is a puko, which means knife and finish, okay? Um, so what does leku mean? Sword? I, I don't know. <laughs> Machete. I don't know. Machete. But anyway, you're always going to get with them is these curly birch handles, okay? 
Uh, because that's what they had. Nickel or brass bolsters, okay? And they're always going to be, for the most part, um, fishtail or, or rat tail type tangs, okay? Although they're not always narrowed through, they're kind of wide and they kind of taper down in the back, all right? You're always going to see what they call is like a fish type sheath, this sheath. It holds this knife, these knives really well. I mean, and then this has a companion Some knife of them do, it. some of them don't. A companion knife with it, okay? So you can do your small work and you can do large work, okay? You got to remember these people herded at reindeer. They were the Sami, the Laplanders, and even the Siberian people did the same thing in, in uh, northern Siberia. So these are a couple of knives. There's a, my bear friend on there. Uh, made by Isaki Yarvenpa. It's, stain, it's a stainless. Most of the time these knives are almost like a flat grind. They're, they're really a very shallow Scandi grind. These are this guy who makes them. And this is up by the Arctic. Okay, up in the northern countries. Okay, I just wanted to show you some different sizes and things. See the, uh, you can see the reindeer on the sheath, you know, whatever. And I usually just wax these or throw some oil on them, whatever, because these types That's of knives, nice tight. yeah, these knives, you have to preserve them, you have to oil them, you have to wax them. As Doug's always pushing snow seal. We used to snow seal our boots all the time. We snow sealed ago, everything. You know? <laughs> so you want to have a knife that, that, that is there when you need it. It's not broken. It's not rusted. You know, whatever. Okay? Okay. This was... The Isaki of Yavenpa has been around for a long time. Okay? And coming on down the road here, <clears throat> this is called a Norse King. This was made by Mora. Okay? And, That's you know, an early Mora. That's an early Mora, okay? Yeah, this is what they looked like before plastic handles. <laughs> okay? Uh, nice, you know, thick spine. You know, nice knife. I think it's almost like 90, you know. You could probably strike something with it. I, you can hear me hitting it, you know? Yep. Anyway, if you can't, you can't. But all these knives, for the most part, do not have guards. Now, you can get them with a guard. A okay? finger guard. A finger guard. Bottom. They'll usually have a bottom or the Moras in Sweden will have a double edge, double guard. I don't, I don't like them. I break them off. <laughs> but anyway, if you use good knife technique and knife safety, you shouldn't have to worry about these things because they're used for slicing, they're used for dicing, they're used for carving. And then you got a good, you got a good hand up, whatever, and you hold them. And you like take your time. like camp chores. Right. And they're not big choppers. Okay, although the Leku can be used as a chopper. That's an EDC carried every day. Do everything with it. So, um, in going along in an older, now here's, an, here's a much older knife. I got this right from Sweden. It took almost two weeks to get to me. He, he rode his bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swam. I swam and then picked up my, it was a triathlon. He put big paddles on his tires. <laughs> and floated. Now, this is a K.I. Mora Sweden. It's an old blade. Wow. Okay, that's an old blade. Okay. Uh, this thing is like, like razor sharp. It's like okay. reindeer bone. And it is reindeer bone. This is reindeer bone. This, of course, is birch. Birch is, is like everywhere in, yeah. in the Northlands, okay? And they use it a lot. It's a soft wood. It burns well. And it's it got good well. oil content. Yeah, too. and you can, you can, you can, it'll suck it up too, you know? So I bought this. This is, this is an old, older knife, okay? So moving right along here, after this very traditional knife, we have what is called a a, a another leku. This is Finnish also. It was made uh, by Lapin Puko. This is actually a, a leku which has a uh, Lara type blade. You can um, find these Lara blades, L-A-U-R-I, uh, available without handles. You can put your own handles on. Now as you can see this is brass. It's, you know, it's, it's, um, what do you call it? oxidizing a little bit, whatever. I don't care. I like the look. Uh, I redid the handle. I cleaned it up. Well, I cleaned it. I made it a little darker. And I also put a finger groove in here because these were made to fit hands with mittens. And they did all their butchering of the reindeer uh, bones and so forth and all their camp chores, i.e. making fires, uh, making their teepees, which look very much like the Native American teepee. And... Um, this was your basic big camp knife, okay? And this is, you don't see the Lapin, L-A-P-I-N, made much anymore, but they are out there. Nice knives, very, <laughs> very sharp. Um, 
I like the Scandi grind. Most of these are 1095 or Scandvic. Um, I like the uh, Scandi grind because it's easy to sharpen. And I don't, right. I don't bust my, my blades. You just lay it flat, find the, you know, let the angle drop on the stone and pull it, and it's sharp. They are. They're easy to sharpen. They're easy to sharpen. I don't want anything hard to sharpen. But you know? it's not an extremely strong edge. So. Well, you want to use. You're not going to use the cut concrete. Okay? That's true. All right. So anyway, also the traditional wrap around <laughs> type. You know, thing. I'm not knocking other knives. I mean, a, a knife is what it's used for. You know, what is, what do you got? You got what you're going to use it for. Right. Okay. I would rather use an axe or a saw, preferably a saw, for cutting big trees rather than a big knife. Okay. But you got what you got. That's what you use. Okay. Plus, you got to remember up north the birch is a pretty soft wood, so it's easy to cut. It's not I like going through oak and whatever. How do you spell Leku? L E U K U. L E U. E U K U. K -U. Well, you know, leukocyte means white. No, a white, white blood cell, right? Uh, leukocyte. Anyway, um, a lot of these knives can be found on um, eBay under Constantine's Armory. He sells the Brissa, he sells the wood jewels, which I'm going to show you. The Ati, what? Leku means big knife. Is that what I mean? <laughs> I there you go, that. big knife, okay? <laughs> See, I got educated, all right? I, I, Sammy I, culture. Sammy, yeah. I never Sammy. said I knew everything, all right? Just the, just most. So I anyway, knew it had to be like, like sword big knife. or big <laughs> yeah, knife. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Anyway, so around the time of Mora, <clears throat> I, was, I, I was looking. I gave Doug, like, an, they had these army with OD green plastic handles. <laughs> And I gave him one. They were through Sportsman's Guide. I always find a lot of the stuff through Sportsman's Guide, right? Well, there was a company called Kellum. Kellum. And it's a Polish guy and his girlfriend. Uh, maybe it's his wife. I don't, she didn't take his name. But they started importing knives from Finland, okay? And Doug has one, which he, he really likes as a necker. And this is your Kellum knives, okay? I, I, I like dark handles. Most of this, these handles are always light. But this is a Puko. That Doug has. And they're relatively inexpensive yes. as far as these knives are concerned. Forty some bucks right here for yep. this knife. Forty some odd dollars. Okay. Great necker. Uh they're light. They're sharp. And as we walk up in size. And easy to sharpen. Yep. See? Kellum. It's got the caribou uh insignia. Okay. I like the dark sheath. Actually says Puko on it. Very very nice made nice leather sheets. sheets. I mean everything's yeah. just done well. It's crack handcrafted well. And here's a big boy. And this is more of your your uh, bushcrafting type knife. See. And uh, it's got you know in in groove. And they usually have like these Coke bottle handles on them. They're usually fat in the middle. Very comfortable. They're really and you can choke up on it. You know keeping these fingers back here into the groove and so forth. And, you know do your your tasks. Okay. So these knives uh, go anywhere from the mid forties to sixty, seventy, eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them. That's Kellum, K E L L A M. Okay, next group of knives are the wood jewels. These are cool. And like the Yarvenpa, these are made up in northern, the northern Finnish, uh, Swedish areas, and it's used mainly. They use birch and antler and, and uh, bone, okay? So, I'm going to go with the smallest one first. And you always know a wood jewel, and it's J-E-W-E-L, okay, by the moose tracks on the sheath. There's always a moose and moose tracks, all right? This is one of the first ones I ever bought, and I used it on one of the rendezvous. Very nice knife. <clears throat> it wasn't bought new. It was bought used. And they always use a brass bolster, okay? I love the birch. You can darken them up if you want uh, in the antler, and whatever, and you can see the uh, uh, ball peened ends. And these knives are really lightweight as yeah. well. That's what I like about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this knife here, this Kellum, I bet you this thing doesn't weigh three ounces. Yes, yeah, they're real. They're I mean, real it's you know, as opposed to you know, a newer one, a newer, bigger one, yeah. you know, a bigger one. This yeah, is exactly. like a nine ounce knife, eight, nine ounces. Okay. Um, but you're going to get, you know, stronger, you know, anyway. Yeah, you have a bit thicker spine. You have a full, you have full tang. You know, you do more, do more heavier duty tasks with it. Okay. You see how I took the spine down a little bit, right? 
to make it super 90 degrees because that's I, that's what I like. Super. I mean, handled. even Mora makes a red handle uh, wooden and plastic uh, handle knife. There's coming three or actually four different styles, lengths and okay. And um, Jonathan Nolan, I sent him one because he says they, they make any with wooden handles. And yeah, so here's one. That was like 11 bucks. Okay, <laughs> uh, great knives. So here is one. It was a longer, a little longer of the puka style, you know. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, okay, and that nice look. Look at the look at the look at the birch on that. And the reindeer. Yeah. In, on the back, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, the antler and whatever. Now moving along, uh, in the same genre of wood jewel, we have some fatter knives, okay, and shorter, thicker blades. They also could be called a pu uh, um, a leku, only because they have a wider. And, and shorter blade. Okay. Yeah. This one here is the one I bought at the, our first gun show we ever Get went that to. handle. Holy moly. Okay. It fits the hand, man. I you mean, know, there's no room. That it's there, you know. And I have a small hand for a relatively large man. Okay. Some guys like really fat handles like yeah. that. I mean, I do. I like it to fill. I like it to fill my hand, you know. Um, you may see at the base here, the bolster, some... Um, brown material uh brown staining oh, there yeah. that's that's actually nail clear nail clear polish. nail polish i put it in there to fill in these small even though it's a tight fit in the bolster i don't want any water going down in there and one day and, rusting the, and rusting the rusting the uh the tail through here or the pummel that's in here okay that's why i do I, all my puka knives usually have that done all of them but this is one of the first little small ones i got I paid like sixty bucks at the gun at the uh, blade show, two thousand sixteen. Doug and I drove twenty seven thousand hours to get to. Uh, okay, so here's the sheep. I thought I was, I, the first uh, the first to go in there. I thought I was taking a shortcut. Not <laughs> we went two hours out of our way. We ended up Virginia somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I said, Bob, you sure you know where you got? I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at. <laughs> we get, we're sea size for Virginia Beach. <laughs> it's, well, it's like it's like the turtle that that one one that one commercial for uh, I don't know was it for cellular phone? He goes, oh, my whole body's a compass. <laughs> anyway. I thought we were taking a trip yeah, to uh, <laughs> Little Creek. Yeah, yeah. I thought we were going to Florida. We were we were we were going south instead of uh, went west. Anyway, here is one from uh, Constantine's Armory, very similar to the one I just showed you. I just love the the uh, bird's eye or bird's egg type. Uh, it's like a hunk of clay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, it, watch oh. it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Okay, but uh, it's a nice short knife. I it, mean, you—that's. I tell you what, man. This thing <laughs> <laughs> fills your hand. You're not getting tired with this knife. That's in your right. Hand. That's right. You're using everything. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I I I just I thought it was the I would thought it was a, a different than the one I had, but. The only difference is the sheath is bigger and the handle is bigger, but the blades are at the same size. Now, they make a knife. Um, uh, Laurie makes a blade that's um, differentially tempered. It's called an LPH or something like yeah, that. Yeah, harder at the edge and, and softer yeah, at the spine. Yeah, and I forgot to bring it, but I, I, right. I had, um, I had what's his name? Um, oh, God. Uh, the guy I put the handles on. He, he reminded me of that. It's called LPH by Laurie. L-A-U-R-I. That's the bleed. Okay? Anyway, so this is a little fatter, a little bigger, and it has a tough time getting in its sheath. In these sheaths, there is a there's a plastic, plastic liner. liner in, in most of these sheaths. They go about three quarters of the way up, so you don't cut through. Okay? All right. Moving on. So Moving on up. up. So Norway makes a number of knives, which you know. Heli. I don't know if you know about a Stromeg, okay? Stromeg. Stromeg. Their ex Norwegian knives are expensive. They're more expensive than the Finnish knives, mm. okay? The Swedish, like the Falknivens and all, they're very expensive, four or five hundred some odd dollars, but they're they're excellent knives, okay? Anyway, this is a little little Stromeg I got. I always wanted to get the Leku, but it's it's um it's got a powder coat on it of some sort. It's a nice little uh, little knife. Yeah, it looks like a forced patina. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, these colors... You'll notice the straw makes have these colors on here. Okay? These are the colors of the Sami people up north. They are an indigenous people recognized, I believe, by all the Scandinavian countries, but Norway is one of them where they actually fly their own flag. Okay? Like native Norwegians? 
I wouldn't call them Nor- Native Norwegians. Like Native Americans. They're Native. They're Native people, Indigenous people. Indi- to that. Indigenous but people. But they're not. Yeah. They weren't. Norwegians came from all over. You right. know what I mean? There wasn't a Norway. They came from basically Den. A lot of them came from Denmark. Mm. So anyway, that's that. It's Strome. What did I tell you? Okay. God, so smart. I tell you, if you watch Vikings on the History Channel, you'll learn a lot Yo. of things too. Anyway. I'm always dubious <laughs> in those shows, though. They'll stick something in there that yeah. is, is supposed to be, you know, yeah, like. Yeah. And then, you're and, like, then oh, and then Doug's afraid of saying it, and somebody coming back at him and saying you're oh, wrong. Man. I've had that already. I, I've had to eat crow, and it's okay. It's fine. I mean, you educate me. I'm educating you. Okay. Anyway, this is I, I. I had two of these, but actually three, and I found out one was made in Germany. I got rid of it. So <clears> nothing wrong with it. I mean, this is the Finnish Army's uh, prototype or the thing they had for a while. This was their knife. Nice. Okay. And uh, I bought a Sportsman Guide, uh, two for like twenty two bucks. Hmm. Okay, and uh, I sold one to um, my good friend. God, he's my good friend. I can't remember his damn name. <laughs> Cusack, Tom Cusack. Tom Cusack. Tom Cusack makes good great sh- knife handles. Good shout out, Tom. Knife knife handles he put on my. I know he watches his channel all the time. He does great, great guy. Okay, anyway, uh, and of course I've done the whole Necker Bull, you know, and the ferro rod and ceramic and whatever. It's a sharp knife. Um, anyway, nice knife. They got this lady was trying to sell this for like eighty eight dollars. I told her I paid like twelve dollars for mine. What are you trying to do? I do that all the time. <laughs> I used to go to Chesapeake. You used to have a place. And you know what they usually say? Well, go buy it for twelve bucks. And then. I do. I, I but I want to let them know they're not blowing wool. You're smoking on Bob. Right. I used to go in this knife shop called Chesapeake Knife and Tool. Oh, I love that place. They're not. They're not around anymore. No, they're not. So Chesapeake uh, Knife. I don't know if it was tour. Knife and tool. Used That's to be at White Marsh Mall. Anyway. <laughs> I bought that BMF there, that Gerber BMF. Yeah. We used to go there because we got catalogs, knife catalogs. This is before the internet. This is back when knives were not popular. Yeah, and you know they were mostly I mean? the survival knife thing. You know, right. there was um, the Rambo thing had taken off, so people were buying different knives. Okay. <laughs> the, so, the hollow handle The hollow handle knives. knives, right. So anyway, I'd go there and look at their prices. And I knew I could get them better than retail through my catalog. Right. So I used to tell the guy this all the time. Oh, he used to get right. pissed off. So people would come and say, oh, what am I paying for this? I said, ma'am, if you go over to here, if you go there, <laughs> you go there. And, and he hated me showing up. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, if you're a consumer, why not get the best deal? That's true. And, and if people are going to screw you and mark something up 300% or 3,000%, that's wrong. That was a convenience yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. It's you could ad- walk into the store, yeah. hold the knife, <laughs> buy it, and take it home. Right. But yeah. ethically, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. You know? So I felt... <laughs> Pocketbookly, he couldn't do it Yeah, I t- and, I, and I wasn't going to, because <laughs> I knew I could get them cheaper. But anyway, I, I'm going to go on. That, they're not in business anymore. Mainly because... Yeah, I wonder probably, why. I wonder why, you know? No, it, <laughs> no the internet just, killed... A Those lot of it. Work. The internet's killing a lot of business. Anyway, um, I will not buy from Amazon, by the way, at all, at all. Mainly because you can't, you can't haggle. You know, on, can't haggle. You can't haggle. You got to pay the price. And secondly, I'm not going to support a billionaire. All right, Jeff Bezos. I'm not going to support him. All right. <laughs> so anyway, I hate it when people haggle with me. Now, so. <laughs> now uh, another Finnish, Kalhava, Finland. Makes the Ati, A H T I. Okay. Very nice looking type, bushcrafty type knife. Mm. Okay. Ati, A H T I. I like that. Okay. Finger groove. Gee, I wonder what kind of handle that is. Yeah, I wonder what that is too. Bird's eye birch. I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> anyway. Oh no. Rounded spine. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of. This is a, but anyway, um, this knife, 60 some bucks. Mm. $65. Nice sheath. You'll notice I got I got neck things on all all my these knives. They're not heavy, like Doug was saying. They're right. not heavy. These are not heavy. So I can wear a bigger blade knife around my neck and I, and not have to not That's have any true. fatigue. So having said that, they are rat tails, most of them, and you can't do really hard work with them. You will break them. Oh, you can't. You can, but you you. This is a compliment knife. Okay. Right. You know, I have a I have a bigger I have a six to seven inch type knife, thicker spine, three sixteenth, right. wider blade, you know, convex grind that I use for chopping. Full, uh, it's uh, it's, or, it's a full tang. Yeah, knife. or an eight inch or an eight inch the Grizz, my eight, like the one the one that I um you know I designed. 
Okay, but that's for chopping. These are for everyday things. Right, I everyday use, use. Use it in the kitchen. Food prep. You know, whittling. Whittling, sure. Cutting uh, rope. You, you know, know, yeah. Whatever. Kind of stuff. Shaving bark. Whatever right, you need sure. to do. Feather sticks. And that's the that's what you're going to do most of. And that's get, what they're for. If you get in a survival situation, you can always break logs between trees, and you can always push them into a fire. Just have a push fire there's, there's where they burn. You push, ways you burn, to do you push, it, yeah. and whatever. Okay. So this is this you know I, a, a good four to six inches around your neck, about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter wide. You can do a lot with it. Okay, you'll be surprised. You'll use the smaller knife more. You will use a big knife. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So go ninety percent of your camp tours are done with a smaller knife. So moving on, and Doug's going to show you another one of these. This is the tam Tamagami, designed by uh, Les Stroud. I like or this I say knife. Stroud Tamagami. Les Stroud. It's, Stroud. it's California. It's um, um, it's um, L. A. of Norway. Right. This is a hundred eighty dollar knife. Yeah, Anywhere they're, they're between pricey. 160 and 180. All the helis are like that. Now, if you'll notice this knife, this knife is not a, a width wide tang. Right. It's a half tang that sits in between the wood. Which is a good idea. But it's three pinned. Right. You see, it's three pinned. It is a full tang knife, but if you look back here, it's not, it doesn't come out to the right. wood. It's not full thickness all and the full, way through the see, handle. See? And it gives you a little bit of light. Lightness, but a strong knife. Right. Okay. Hele knives are expensive, and they're made really well, really well. Um, I like them; they're nice. I got this on a trade, not really a trade, but I got them cheap. Uh, my sheath is, is that's just, more of a modern take take bushcraft on these type. puko style knives. But if you want to, you know, if you don't want to pay three four hundred dollars for a bushcraft knife, here it is. It's right here. It's a Hele. Okay. And if you want to go down to sixty or seventy dollars, here it is, an Ate. Now. I'll show you a knife. Uh, I don't know if you remember a place called um, what was it? Sharper Image. Mm. Okay, they had a knife that was designed by a Finnish architect named Tapio Virkala. This one's iconic. Okay, uh, you know what else? The Hackman has a wider edge down this way. Oh, this yeah. is sharper. This is pointier. Anyway, well, the Hackman makes the uh, that the, folding. I have that one the too. Folding the folding knife. Too, yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, this knife is in the uh, in the uh, museum at New York and Tapio in Finland. Virkala. It's it, it's simple. It's a simple knife. It's a phenolic handle, rat tang all the way through, brass bolsters. I haven't cleaned them up. Super light. Very light. Very sharp. Good canoeing knife. Absolutely. Backpacking. Yeah, it's yeah. got you know it's got my bear bear paws on it. You know, and I bought this for like I mean you know, I remember in the eighties for like I don't know fifty sixty bucks maybe less <laughs> than that. Expensive. And now. and now now they're on eBay. They're three hundred some odd dollars. I mean for, for a new one. For well. I don't well, think they don't have new ones. Uh, for uh, mint you, condition. Yeah, I mean, they're expensive. Way. You can get it for 200 Yeah, uh, but anyway, I, p I have another one that I paid um, one, 130 for. I'll, I'll eventually get that one. But this is a sharp knife. It's a nice knife. It's light. It's traditional. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I, everybody's got to make a living. I get that. And if you want to purchase from a private guy, like I've, well, I didn't purchase it from him. <laughs> he gave it to me for a birthday gift. But I have his Delta Whiskey Infinity. Great knife. I mean, it's just it's a it's a good it's a good middle ground knife between the um, the wilderness one, the first one he designed, was the backcountry, the backcountry, and the smaller ones. Okay, it's that good in between type knife. Okay, um, but then again, I've traded stuff to him that's cost a lot, a lot yeah, of money we're too. We're always trading, so back we're always back. trading back and forth. But um, if you want a moderately priced, well made, anywhere from sixty to one hundred and fifty dollars, they're there. Go to Constantine's Armory on eBay and look his stuff up. You 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 will be uh, pleasantly Constantine surprised. Constantine Armory comes from L Illinois. He ships like in three days. Okay, uh, now I'm going to show Doug's uh, Scandinavian type Finnish knives. He also has a, a Tamagami. It, the uh, the birch is a little darker than mine, okay. I oiled it, oiled up, you know. Yeah. And uh, nice knife. Already we already talked about it. Comes in a, 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 a and different. And I put a super ninety degree spine on yes. this. I ground it down. Comes with a different sheath, almost like the Ati. It mm -hmm. doesn't come with the traditional like mine, like mine has. But that's no big deal. It's a nice <clears> sheath, <throat> okay. Um, you have to remember that Doug is these sheaths that he makes or he creates, like this one here, is a platform. 
it's just it's just basic platform and you guys decide what you want on this platform okay you could have an inflatable boat you could have a blow up doll home the um, okay you know anything <laughs> we even we even thought about that one time remember we thought about putting, kitchen sink putting bigger shit on it anyway but you know he does a fabulous job with the sheath itself it's it's very artistic it's very they're military grade slick that's looking. that's what i that's what i call military grade i was in the military for quite a while i know military grade stuff tough thick you know i think his sheath speak for themselves okay there's not there's not a person who's not happy with his sheath yeah period yeah. period okay so the next one i want to talk about well i'm going to go to this one now this is a kind of a newer one on the market really nice bushcrafty type sheath very thick you know this is called a Brisa or a Brissa, and this is made in Finland. Okay, nice little carver, you know, small, it's a nice small little knife. You know, the the birds. Uh, it's full birds tang. Head. It's a full That's tang what's knife. Different about it's it. got red liners, if you can see. Yeah, very pretty knife. Uh, Constantine's Armory has these, and they go for like one seventy five. Okay, not a bad knife at all. Sharp O one tool poopy. That okay. one is. one Tulsa is a great steel. I it like is. I like the old steels. Uh, just they've yep. been around. They work. I just, I just like them. Okay, nice knife. <clears throat> this knife is for sale. Um, I don't know what he wants for it. I'm not going to ask him. You can PM him or text him or whatever. But you can't go wrong with this. This can use use as a necker. It's a little. I don't even know it's that heavy. I mean, if you got a bull neck like me, it's he'd be fine. Or a fat belly to hold it up. You can. You're all right. But. Um, this, this is for sale, and you can't go wrong with these knives. You cannot go wrong with these knives. I'm telling you, okay? So, now, the, the last one I want to talk about, <clears throat> as again, um, this, uh, this is um, a castrum, and it's Swedish, okay? Now, the first, boy, this is tight. This is, man, he's just got, he's just so, does he so great. Um, it's also the, uh, neither light or birch. <clears throat> you know, it also has black, looks like black liners in it, okay? Um... This this knife here is like the bushcraft knife of UK. Mm. I, 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 I watched the YouTube on the UK bushcraft rendezvous they had there. And it was, <laughs> Everybody's got and one. And it was sponsored by <laughs> Bushcraft Magazine or something. I mean, they're really into this, okay? And um, I'm going to tell you what. This booth, Castrum, sold out. This is a, a very big knife of choice among the Europeans, other than the Finnish Pukos, which mm -hmm. they have. They buy a lot of them, okay. Mm -hmm. And the Moras, they're really big on the Moras. But this is a Castrum, and uh, it is for sale. Not the knife, the system. The knife and sheath, and you tell me what you want on this, okay? And I can give you whatever you want. As uh, long as it fits. I like this tan or brown. I like this, you know. Yeah, that's that. Uh, it's coyote brick. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. And it's uh, brand new stuff. And you can put a ferro rod on here. You've seen his stuff. Compass, a dangler. Is, dangler. Different yeah. type of thing. You know, he has the the uh, Altoids, you know, thing you might and be you able to get on here. You don't have to put anything on it if you don't yeah. want. Yeah. I mean, that's how he, I've got a, one or two sheets that he made for me. I don't have anything on them. That's just me. That's Bob. It's just, you know, what Bob does. But, uh. You know, you guys could have an all-purpose, all-one system type sheath and knife together. Okay, yeah, uh, you PM this one too. Yeah, PM him or uh, text him. Okay, he'd like to see these go. I don't know what the prices are, but I'm sure he'll work with you in one way. And he's hey, look, he's not going to take a dive. All right, these are new knives. I pay for these knives. Yeah. These They're are new. Not these are, these are new knives. Okay, so. Anybody's not going to, you know, he ain't going to jump jump down the toilet, for, you know, just to give you a knife, all right? <laughs> He's got to make a living, all right? Uh, if you're going to text me, it's 443-315-6033. Or you can PM me through Facebook if you don't want me, if you don't want to give me your phone number. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I want, to, I want to handle one of these. That's the only reason why, no, I don't. <laughs> That's the only reason I, I came up here today. That, that knife had I want to see this appeal. because because it's, they have these on the Constantine Armory, and I want to check it out. But it's got a sharp spine on it, nice spine. All right, guys, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope Bob enjoyed video wing. <laughs> Always do. And uh, I'll see you.
Comments, questions, lay them out. Out. Lay them out. Out.